the worst day of my life. The worst day of my life, I was 27. It was November 7th, 2016. Um, I was engaged. I was engaged to be married to uh, this girl, Anna Marie. And um, we, had, we had only known each other for like, uh, maybe like four months at the time, but we hit it off and, uh, you know, we were both on in, in recovery, right? I was did, like, I had done AA, I was worked the steps, I had a sponsor and stuff, and it's kind of get my life back together. You know, I met Anna Marie, we had hit it off, we were together for a couple of months, and uh, I asked her to marry me. Um, she was actually still in a sober living house at the time, but uh, I was working with my uncle, Lane Tile, you know, and, um, you know, we would go to, like, meetings together and stuff, like, every day. We spent a lot of time together every day. She'd come see me at whatever job site I was working at every day, and um, she was an amazing person. She was an amazing person. Uh, we were both, like, musicians. We'd play guitar and sing songs and stuff like that. And uh, so one day I was at work. I didn't hear from her that whole day. I remember her saying like uh, her ex-boyfriend was like getting out of prison soon. And uh, that whole day I didn't hear from her. I'm like, oh shit, that she probably with that dude. He probably got out and they probably ran off together. I had all these thoughts going through my head like that. And you know, very insecure type of thoughts and you know, even resentful type of thoughts. Well, eventually, uh, we got off work that day, and I was uh, headed back to the city, and I got a text message from her cousin, and it said, uh, Anna Marie died. And I was like, no, this is like a sick-ass joke. This shit is not real. Like, that was my first response. Like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. You know, right after that, I got a call from the house manager saying to, like, uh, did I want a ring back? You know, because they had the medical examiner had come. They pronounced her uh, dead. They were going to do toxicology, but they said it was, they found her with a needle. It was a heroin overdose. And uh, apparently, you know, everybody else had heard before I did because uh, there was like people from our recovery community at the house when I got there, you know, and I was just blown away. I was just like crying. Once I like, everybody was there and I realized it was real. Um, so that was like one of the worst days of my life. You know, what I learned from that was, you know, how, how to love, cause I loved Anna Marie and I knew she was an addict and uh, cause I was a fucking alcoholic. I'd gone through all this recovery and um, seeing everybody go going through it, and knowing knowing what the like the struggle was, you know what I mean. And so I loved her, you know, despite like a few times she lied to me. I was, you know what I mean, because uh, I didn't get high with her. You know, and she saw me as like her way out of that shit, because I wasn't gonna do it. But um, I mean after that happened, then that's exactly what I did. You know, I ran to that needle, I ran to that bottle for like the next few months. I remember the first couple of days after, thereafter, I was just like in like a, like a state of shock, but it was extremely humbling. Like I couldn't be angry. You know, I couldn't be mad. I couldn't even think to have any other feeling other than pain, you know? But in a way, you know what I mean, that just changed me. That changed me because, uh, you know, it taught me the unconditional love, you know? I mean, people talk about it all the time. It's when somebody dies, you're like, you know, you come to that realization, like, you know, treat people good, show them that you love them because you never know what could happen. And, uh, for the next couple of months thereafter that, man, I mean, I pretty much tried to destroy myself. Just to be totally honest, there there was no way I could cope with that pain, you know, um, at that time. 
I, like I said, I ran to the needle. I ran to the bottle. I had thoughts of suicide, like, on a daily basis. Um, you know, one day I put that needle down. You know, one day I put that bottle down. Because um, I, I called one of my friends. And I was talking to them because, uh, like, I was, you know, I was trying to be in my daughter's life. You know? But I was still fucking up. You know, I was still drinking. I had relapsed into drinking, you know, from... With all that, I went back to drinking. I went to the fucking... You know, she died from heroin. And then I had never had, like, a heroin habit or anything like that. But I started using after that. I can't explain to you why. Um, it was obviously probably, like, the most stupidest thing possibly to do. My fiancé died from a from an overdose. And then... So I got to start using... But, you know, I was trying to cope with that pain. I didn't know how to. But I realized, you know, that, um, that life is short and it's only as meaningful as you make it, you know? And we all struggle and it's these lies, these lies that we, we tell each other that destroy us. You know, we, we want to hide our struggles and we want to hide away our demons and, you know, and just deny that they exist or whatever. But, um, I realized it is, it's not, it's not really possible to live that way. You know, if we're not actively denying these demons, then they are actively eating away at our lives. And they will take us. And it's it's in our mind. You know, I don't know what I could have done. I've thought about it many, many times. What could I have done? I could have done something different, you know. But the only thing I can think of is that that whole experience, you know, God bless her soul, but that whole experience was a lesson I mean, there's nothing else I could take from it in the end, but pain, suffering, and that learning, learning that lesson. To love people, man. To, if you really care, that's all you can do because we only have so much time. We only have so much time and we don't know when it's going to be over with. So we have, to, we have to love each other. If that's what we want to do, we have to do that unconditionally because, you know, People are doing the best that they fucking can with what they know. So I try so hard not to be angry at people or anything like that because we don't know what the fuck we're doing. We don't know what we're doing to ourselves. We don't know what we're doing to each other unless we're consciously developing these things. We don't really, people are mostly just going through life doing the best thing that they know how to do and they don't really know how to do anything different. You know, that's why I try not to be mad at people because it's like, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. But we need to raise our conscious awareness of these things, you know? It could save a fucking life. It could save a life, man. And just reduce the suffering that's going on in the world. Like, we're all doing the best that we know how to do, but we could do so much better. We could do so much better and... Not just for ourselves, but for each other, you know. But that like, in, I think it gave me like an increased threshold for suffering, for like mental, emotional suffering, you know. And when you're going through that, you can't possibly think to hurt another person. Like somebody's rude to you and you're just like, you're like, thank you. But that was like the worst day of my life. And in a sick kind of way, it was like one of the most rewarding experiences of my life because it changed me. You know? But um, it changed me. And now I didn't ever want another relationship after that. I didn't ever want to be with it like, 
you know, I, I figured I'd rather be alone than ever go through love again. Than ever go through love because I associated love with pain. Like in a very real way. Like if you love something, you're going to lose it and it's going to hurt you beyond anything that you could ever imagine. You know, today I, you know, I have my family, I have my wife now, I have found somebody, you know. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I consider it to be sacred to the utmost degree of sacredness. But that's why, you know, I don't play with relationships. I don't play with people's feelings and I always try to be, you know, respectful and, you know, encouraging to people. Because it might be the last fucking day. It just really might be. You know, I never expected that shit. Like we were both like clean and sober and like getting our shit together. I had been through all kinds of legal problems and addiction problems. I was I was sober and I was like getting my record clean and you know the same thing for her. She had been to prison and shit, but she had these months of 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 clean time. And that one relapse, man, that one relapse, she put that needle in her arm and it was fucking done. One mistake could end your life. If you have those kind of problems, one mistake could end your life. One mistake could, and it could translate to anything, you know, a relationship, a job, whatever you got that you consider important. That one fucking mistake, that one choice could end all that shit. And the people, all the people around you will fucking suffer. You know, but that suffering is, uh, to me, it's like the purpose of life. Can you suffer and still love? Can you love through the suffering? How much pain, how much pain can you exist in? And still want to live life. After that happened, I didn't want to live life. You know? But I still had my daughter. A lot of us have these similar kind of experiences. And I think it's like, what kind of meaning do you attach to it? I attached a meaning to it. Like, this is for a purpose. You know, that's because... It took a while to get to that point, of course. To say that, that that was there was a purpose in that, but without the purpose, then it's it's just purely just pain. So, um, thank you guys for listening. Much love and respect. I gotta go pick up my daughter from school right now. Peace.